Welcome to Ransomware Detection with Sysmon and Splunk. My name is Jane and Lyons. I will be presenting this discussion today. I'm the creator and editor for CybersecuritySupportDesk.com. Let's go ahead and we're going to add some Sysmon data into Splunk. Okay, so, all right. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Settings data inputs and this is taking a long time for some reason okay so we're going to setting okay so um, a couple assumptions for, for this uh, video now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with sysmon from Windows sys internals system monitor Okay, and now you already have Sysmon on your computer. Okay, if not, it's a simple download and, and, and installation on the command line. Okay, and I'm assuming that you already have Splunk version 8.1 and Splunk for Windows TA installed. Okay, so let's pull, so if, to install, so let's go to I'm going to go to local event log collection. Okay, so we're going to in local host. So these are all of the avail all of your available logs. So these are all my available logs on this uh, computer. Okay, the ones that are grayed, I are I've selected, and so these are on the right. This your my selected logs. Okay, so all the logs you want to ingest into Splunk, these are all logs that are native to, to Windows. You can just click on that and you'll go over into the selected logs. So if you can go all the way now, you find Sysmon. Okay, Sysmon or somewhere. Okay, but I already have Sysmon. Go here. Oh, there we go. So you see Windows, Microsoft Windows Sysmon operational. You find that in your available logs, and when you click it, it goes over here to a selected logs. Okay, and these are going into my default index. Okay, so the other is my index. It goes in my default index, and you just click save. Click save, boom, we're ingesting your Sysmon what is this thing? logs into Splunk. So these are all my logs on the Splunk. Okay. So let's go. And then we got Sysmon. Let's go into search and reporting. And of course, Sysmon falls into that endpoint data category. Well, now we so we've ingested Sysmon. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Sysmon data. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just take a look at our index main, and let's go last eight hours. Okay. Let me do this. Uh, do this like this. Of course, we get lots of way to get to Sysmon, but I'm going to go this way. Just going to our main index. But come over here to source. We got our selected fields, interesting fields. Come over here to source. These are all the sources, the different logs, native Windows logs that are in Splunk. So right here, the big one. So you see Sysmon is pretty, pretty noisy. We've got 26,000 events just from Sysmon. Okay, so look, if we click on that, that narrows our search to only our Sysmon data. 
which is those which are those 26,000 events which is a lot it's a lot eight hours okay okay so with sysmon you have all these fields here we have the destination host name okay so so the host names IP addresses these are I, the IPs we've I've visited on this computer destination ports from yeah, in the last eight hours destination ports I've visited in the last eight hours okay category these are our sysmon event kind of process create process and network connections okay so lots of stuff. Our event codes, so event code one, three, and five. Hashes, hashes. Sysmon creates a hash for all the processes. Okay, and this is a big one, image. Okay, so these are all the processes that Sysmon has recorded. Okay. And let's see, the command line, there's command line. Command line, so not only does that process, list of processes, it also records the command line. So this is the whole uh, command line execution that went along, goes along with that process. And it gives you the parent image, the parent image and the parent command line process. So you can look at the process and compare that to the parent process, you know, so. Analyze that with the process. Okay, and okay. So let's go into. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Let's go into our slides. Let's go to the ransomware kill chain. Okay, so ransomware is evolving, adapting, and being modified far too quickly for antivirus and our existing security controls to keep up with the constant barrage of, of new variants. More sophisticated malware, changing indicators, sneakier tactics and techniques. Okay, But certain behaviors of ransomware will always be present to, in order to operate Okay, and to successfully pull off the attack. Okay, so with ransomware, there are really only four goals. Okay, and that's what this chain, kill chain shows here. Get on an endpoint, execute code, operate command and control. Okay, communicate with that endpoint, and then drop the ransomware payload without getting detected or blocked or, or remediated. Okay, so... But as you see here, there are multiple defense mechanisms to, to, that the ransomware needs to avoid, bypass, or trick along the way to evade multiple layers of security controls. So here are your four sessions here. Initial access. Got to get on an endpoint. That email, that phishing email, ex or exploit kit, the watering hole, okay? Code execution. Okay. So initial access, what's in the way potentially of initial access? We've got our email, I've got to get around these email authentication protocols and mail, mail gateways, code execution. Got to get past endpoint security, application whitelisting. Okay. Communicating with, the, with C2, command and control. Okay. Got to ev evade the firewalls and proxy servers. Okay. All to act on the objectives to drop ransomware, or reuke, wanna cry, pet ya. Okay. So we've got these, the rants has got to, the adversary needs to evade network monitoring tools. And of course, all this is being fed into a SIM, like such as Splunk. Okay, it's for central monitoring. So you've got to also evade uh, triggering all these alerts and, and SOC analysts analyzing alerts. 
Okay. So where to look? Okay. So based on the ransomware kill chain, there are basically three main points on an endpoint to catch the exploit or ransomware in progress. Okay? Three main points to detect the kill chain in progress. Okay? Okay? So these are our three main hunting, threat hunting locations. The exploit kit to the endpoint. Okay? How is the adversary getting on the target system? Exploit kit, phishing, spear phishing. Okay, this is the adversary staging server. This will be done from the adversary staging server. Okay. Okay. Once on the system, the second point is this communication. This beaconing to the to command and control server site site or server. This beaconing. Okay. The endpoint beaconing to the imp to C2 and send your C2 communicating to the endpoint. Okay. And the third point to catch the ransomware activity is the endpoint reaching out to, to a payment site to a Tor network, you know, to, or to payment server to pay the ransom. Okay, so initial access, the adversary, get, the adversary gets in through an endpoint via email, website, removable media, an exploit kit, or an unpatched vulnerability. It may crash the endpoint and spawn off a bunch of processes. It may use a PowerShell one-liner as a stager but whatever the technique, the endpoint is going to have to communicate externally somehow to commit to a command and control site or server okay, for instructions or to exfiltrate data. Okay, The endpoint is also going to have to communicate out to a Tor okay, or another suspicious app for payment. Okay. All this malicious activity will be present in your logs, likely masquerading as legitimate processes and traffic, depending on how good the adversary is. Okay, but you can catch it in real time and, and hopefully in time to intervene with Sysmon and Splunk.